of that. No more dying there. <laughs> sanctuary. Let everyone who has breath praise ye the Lord. We have come to another service to declare that time is filled with swift transition. The service is one of gratitude and acknowledgement of the generous gifts that God gave to Judge Patricia Mayberry and the generous ways, marvelous ways in which she lived out those gifts. It is a time that in the midst of our grief, we also acknowledge a life well lived. But it's a solemn knowledge that how quickly our lives can be changed. We remember in the second verse of now thank we all our God that, oh, may this bounteous God through our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us to keep us in God's grace and guide us when life is perplexed and free us from the ills until the next. And so this is the day that the Lord has made, not out of some mindless praise, some hallelujah hand clapping, but this is the day that God has prepared for us that through his death and through the warring of the enemy that we grieve not as if we have no hope, but that we have life even in the midst of death. So we recognize the bishops of the church, the supervisors, the general officers, the spouses and friendships, the connectional officers, particularly the WMS president, the connectional lay president, and the WIM president, to this grieving judicial council, to the presiding elders, the clergy, lay youth, members of the 5th Episcopal District, members of Price Chapel, to the members of the Dr. Mayberry's district, special guests, and those who are worshiping us by Facebook and YouTube, but more than that, to this magnificent Mayberry family, particularly presiding elder Harold Mayberry, chair of the Episcopal Committee at the first, 51st session of the General Conference. We are with you, we have been praying, and we will continue to pray for your strength and your comfort. Service will follow as it is outlined in your printed worship guide, with the exception of Bishop Harry C. Wright who will give the reflections from the Council of Bishops. All of you, please be respectful of your time and the time that you speak so that we all may enjoy and be blessed by the words. The hymn, the host pastor, 
Reverend J. Edgar Boyd. Unfortunately, some risks the trust in faltering economic economies. To their dismay, many put their faith in dictatorial and political regimes locally, nationally, and globally. Some even put their trust in friendships that oftentimes crumble, falter, and fail. But join me in reciting the vision of Edward Moe, who said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on his eternal sacred name. Let us pray in song. Please stand except the family. in prayer. O oh God, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, we come together in joy and in sorrow. We mourn the home going of Patricia, but yet we rejoice that our souls leap and shouting because she will not experience pain or sickness or sorrow anymore. We thank you for Patricia's transition to a new and a better life. And we ask for your comfort to descend over the family and the friends not those that are just gathered here, but those that are afar. And may your love shine on them. 
and may they know the mercy and grace that only you can give. Bless us, Lord, with a sense of your goodness and give us peace and joy and happiness. Oh, Lord, let your presence manifest in this place. And as we gather here to celebrate her life, May you bring healing into our hearts. Be our Alpha and our Omega in this service. Let the things we share about Patricia bring joy and healing in our hearts. And we know it would be hard for anyone to fill the gap that we've been left with in our hearts. But we also know that in days and weeks and months and years to come, you will heal us. And what we will be left with is fond memories of our friend and family, Sister Patricia Marie Mayberry. And of the times that we share with her, we thank you right now, Lord, for blessing us in such a mighty way. For well, we know that there is victory over death, and she has conquered that. So, Lord, walk with us, talk with us, and remind us that we belong to you in times like these. So build us up on every leaning side that we might gain strength and keep on keeping on. Give us the victory, and we claim that victory, Lord, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen.
Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all that's good and perfect comes from you. Over all I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Yes. When I lock up my direct, you're the compass for my way.
Good morning, saints of God. Our scripture this morning from the Old Testament is from 1 Kings, the third chapter, the 16th through the 28th verse. And it reads thusly. Soon after, two young prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Sir, one of them began, we live in the same house, just two of us. And recently, I had a baby. When it was three days old, this woman's baby was born too. But her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it in her sleep and smothered it. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep and laid her dead baby in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. And in the morning, when I tried to feed my baby, it was dead. But when it became light outside, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted. It certainly was her son, and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the dead one is yours and the living one is mine. And so they argued back and forth before the king. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child, and each says that the dead, dead child belongs to the other. All right, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, divide the living child in two and give half to each of these women. Then the woman who really was the mother of the child and who loved him very much cried out, oh no sir, give her the child, don't kill him. But the older woman said, all right, it will be neither yours nor mine. Divide it between us. And verse 27 says, Then the king said, Give the baby to the woman who wants him to live, for she is his mother. And 28, Word of God, the word of the king's decision spread quickly throughout the entire nation. And all the people were awed as they realized the great wisdom of God that he had given him. May the people of God hear and do his will in his word. The epistle Romans 10, verses 1 through 10. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the accumulation of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes this about the righteousness. 
That is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that there is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven. That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is written in your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Amen. The Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 33. Listen for a word from the Lord. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spend. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be our God. Good morning. Glory be to God. The Mayberry family wishes to acknowledge receipt of resolutions, expressions of sympathy from the Council of Bishops, all general officers and departments, connection of departments, and judicial council where she served as its president. The family also expresses its sincere appreciation to all friends of their, for their visits, texts, telephone calls, and hugs. And Sister Patricia beloved, be, beloved local church, Christ Chapel, Los Angeles, has sent a few words. So I would like to start off with the resolution from the Board of Trustees. And I would like them who are here to please stand up.
Resolution of the Steward Board of the Price Chapel African and Methodist Episcopal Church of Los Angeles. In loving memory of Patricia M. Mayberry, we, the Steward Board of Price Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church, express our deepest sympathy to the family during the passing of their beloved sister, Patricia Mayberry. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountains seem, the Lord is there to see you through. He will go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. Whereas Sister Mayberry has been called from earth to glory, having served God faithfully and as a longtime member and servant of Christ Chapel AME Church. And whereas she faithfully served as steward at Christ Chapel AME Church, becoming steward pro tem until 2022. And whereas Sister Mayberry played an active role in the life of Christ Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church and aided in the management of Christ Chapel's financial budget and resources. And whereas Sister Mayor Mayberry worked tirelessly serving as a member of the local uh, church lay organization, member of the Mi Mi Women's Missionary Society, member of the Sunday School Department, mistress of ceremony and a narrator for the, voice, the, the Voices of Christ, event planning concert, Sisters Ma Sister Mayberry's service to Christ Chapel never ended faltered. Be it resolved that the steward board of Christ Chapel submits to the will of Almighty God as he calls Sister Patricia Mayberry from labor to reward. We commend her family to, we con commend her family to the internal comfort of the Holy Spirit. Through we mourn, though we mourn, we truly celebrate Sister Mayberry's home going to eternal life. She will never be forgotten, and we find comfort knowing her home, her new home is in glory. Be it further resolved that this resolution is entered in the official records of Christ Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church, and that a copy of this resolution is presented to the family of Sister Patricia Mayberry, humbly submitted on this 17th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2020 the members of the Steward Board of Christ Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church, Christine Wallace, Executive Assistant to the Pastor, Reverend Jeffrey Clark, Pastor. Thank you. Our next, um, our next resolution is from the Council of Bishops, uh, May 15th, 2022, to Mrs. Shirley Hawkins, Sister Marilyn Edmondson, Presiding Elder Harold Mayberry, and the Mayberry family. On, on behalf of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the Council of Bishops offers our condolence in the highest transition, in the heavenly transition of Judge Patricia M. Mayberry, President of the Judicial Council. We are grateful for her impeccable professionalism, judicious brilliance, and strong leadership. The Council of Bishops knew her fairness, competence, and compassion while performing her sole role. She always loved and represented our Zion. It is in such times as this that we refer you and your family to the comforting words of the Apostle Paul as he wrote to the young Christians in Rome's 828, the living Bible version. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to God's purpose for them. Yes, even in death, God is working for your good, well-being and for your comfort at this difficult time. It is our prayer that your faith will be strengthened for the journey ahead. Looking to the day of the heavenly family union, 
we are clear she was prepared to spend eternity with God. In the days of grief, may you know God's strength and love. A servant of Christ, Bishop E. Ann Henning Byfield, President of the Council of Bishops, African Methodist Episcopal Church. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now the devil is busy, so we're not going to have that. Um, but um, I do have a um, a uh, missing re uh, resolution. But we're going to go through this, and we're going to make sure this happens. But in the meantime, uh, I want to acknowledge. Uh, there was a number of, um, uh, we have so many resolutions that there is not enough time to read them all. So just want to kind of quickly read through those. Um, and uh, I want to know that the family will appreciate all of these, even though they're not spoken here. So we had a resolution from the 6th Episcopal District, Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, 12th Episcopal District, Bishop Michael E. Mitchell, 16th Episcopal District, Bishop Marvin C. Xanders II. Um, we also have one from Price Chapel AME Church, Los Angeles. Um, the 5th District Episcopal, the 5th Episcopal District Lay Organization, 4th Episcopal District Lay Organization, 1st Episcopal District Lay Organization, Southern California Conference Lay Organization, Social Action Commission, uh, Connectional Way Women's Missionary Society and the National Council of Bishops, uh, National Council of Churches, um, signed by Bishop Zach Stein McKenzie. Amen. 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 Okay, so give me a couple of seconds, and we're going to try to solve this problem up here. Huh? <laughs> okay. So if the paper don't work, let's go, because I must read that, because this is from the fifth, the fifth District Lay Organization. So I cannot stand down without reading this. So um, can't find the paper, but let's go on here and go to the, 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 the cell phone. Huh? Okay, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the 5th Episcopal District Lay Organization, resolution in loving memory of Judge Patricia M. Mayberry. Whereas, let race, let, let race run well, life's work well done, life's crown well done, well worn. Whereas the officers and members of the 5th Episcopal District Lay Organization, saddened by the loss of Patricia, Judge Patricia M. Mayberry, our beloved sister in Christ. We forever cherish her memory. We extend the immediate family, extended family, and friends and heartfelt, with our heartfelt condolences, profound love, prayers, and support. Whereas Judge Mayberry was faithful, a faithful servant and a long time member of the organization, serving the fifth district diligently as a first vice president, second vice president, director of lay activities, budget of uh, and finance chair, advisor to the past president, uh, Simeon Rodin, the memory of her work will be remembered across the fifth district. Whereas the lay organization has lost a longtime delegate member, we hereby express our appreciation for the godly la life she lived, her ability to seek justice in all circumstances, and to readily share her wisdom and knowledge with us all. And whereas we, the members of the 5th Episcopal District, bow in submission, humble submission, to the will of God, and commend the bereaved family and friends to him who sees all and knows every grieved heart. Now therefore, be it resolved 
that to her memory, the 5th Episcopal District Lay Organization offers this tribute of love and admiration from the words of 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Be it further resolved that a copy of the resolution be kept in the 5th District Lay Organization records and a copy be given to the family. Humbly submitted this 17th day of May the 2022 in the city of Los Angeles, California at First African Methodist Episcopal Church of Los Angeles, Bishop Clement W. Few, presiding Bishop 5th District, Mrs. Alexia Butler Few, Episcopal Sister, uh, Supervisor, and Mr. Lamar Rose, President of the 5th District Lay Organization. Can the 5th District Lay stand up and be seen as I walk off? <laughs> Thank you so much, and forgive me, Bishop. <laughs> I think we need a praise break. Come on. And give God some praise. everyone. My tribute to Patricia M. Mayberry. Could the Stewart Board of Price Chapel please stand with me? <clears throat> Pat was my friend first. Then she joined Price Chapel in 2006 under Reverend Donnell Miles and became a member of the steward board. Then later, she became our pro tem of the steward board at Price Chapel. She let the steward board know that she did not know everything, but what she don't know, she would find out and come back to you. It was a blessing to be a part of Price Chapel Steward Board under the leadership of Patricia M. Mayberry, better known as Pat. She was a big help to all of us on the steward board. She gave us all an opportunity to work the work of Christ. She said, if you help yourself, God will be right there to help you. Kathy, I see something in you that you don't, but let God use you. To the steward board of Christ Chapel, Patricia M. Mayberry, better known as Pat, will be missed. She also let us know that the good in you is always going to be there. Just work the work of God. On behalf of our steward board, Alicia Howard, Jennifer Sanderson, Dorothy Haskins, Barbara Robinson, Ron Wallace. Rest in peace, Pat. We'll do the work you left for us to do. Thank you. Good morning. Drop thy still dues of quietness 
to all our striving cease. Take from our hearts the strain and the stress. And let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. The scientist in me wonders about things like what Jules Verne posited. Two ships randomly placed in the ocean without the aid of wind or tide would someday eventually collide. It's just a matter of time. But the believer in me knows that we have bodies that are not eternal, and God brings us together for his purpose and his plan for a season and some to be seasoning in our lives. I unashamedly admit that I had serious trepidations about pastoring in a church with a member at one of the highest echelons in our denomination. <laughs> Yet when we met, I soon learned that those trepidations only resided inside my head. We learned that we had several connections. We had the Coleman Love connection from the Divine Nine. We also had our SWAC connection, as I often purposely left Texas off of Texas Southern, so part of her matriculation would be at the right school. I also know that season work, uh, working together was not long enough. I wish that it would have been longer. She was indeed a sounding board for the thoughts that ran through my head. Those of you knew who, who knew her better than me knew that she wasn't bashful about sharing her thoughts or opinions. <laughs> Yet with all of that acclaim and with all of those accomplishments that she amassed across the span of the Judicial Council and the Fifth Episcopal District Lay Organization, she never used her influence or position to affect our relationship. It, it was indeed a privilege and an honor for her to call, call me pastor. In my attempt to be funny, I asked her if an appeal about me made its way to the Judicial Council, would she recuse herself? You know, hook a brother up. She said that her twin sister, Patrice, would never let that happen. <laughs> However, Patricia would urge her pastor to stay out of trouble. As we were pondering the way forward with the structural issues at the church, she, she quipped, let's just bulldoze the building down and start all over. To which I responded, I, I want to talk to Patricia, not Patrice. Her impressive impact on all of African Methodism did not drain her from doing her duties at Price Chapel. I, I don't know where she found the energy, but across every aspect and facet of a, the AME Church, Patricia Mayberry was prominent. But let me tell you, across all that happened at Price Chapel AME Church of Los Angeles, Patricia Mayberry was very prominent. I leave you, family, with these four thoughts. She unashamedly loved and served God. She unendingly loved her family. She unapologetically defended the AME Church and its doctrine. But what I am standing here on behalf of the members of Christ Chapel today to say, she was undeniably a member of Christ Chapel AME Church. Her living was not in vain, for truly she seasoned all those whom she came into contact with, family and friends. May the peace of God rest, rule, and abide with you all henceforth now and forevermore. Amen.
Bishop, you, because you told me not to talk long, and, and I would never disrespect you. This, this is very hard for me because I never called Patricia, Patricia, I never called her Pat. I called her the judge. And other than Bishop Few, what I'm getting ready to say, I don't, nobody knows. I didn't meet Patricia in the AME Church. I was stationed in the United States Air Force at Beale Air Force Base in Sacramento. And I was training dogs. And I turned some dogs loose because somebody tried to get smart with me. I turned the dogs loose. When you go in the United States military, they have a book called the MJ Code of Honor. And if you do something, they cover it in that book. They cover it in that book. If you get a speeding ticket, you can look in the book. It'll tell you 30 days you can't drive on the base. When they tried to give me Article 15, I fought the Article 15. They said, you going to the JAG office. I said, well, let's go. When I went, it was Patricia Mayberry. She didn't look at me. She didn't say nothing. She pulled that book out. And the only thing saved me was that book. Because when the dog kennel is closed, nobody has authority to go in there except for the person that's on CO. And it was me. So she single-handedly let me stay in the United States Air Force. When, when I found out she was AME, we were at a meeting, and she came up to me and she said, you know who I am? I said, I seen your face. She said, oh, no, 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 look in my eyes. And I started looking and I said, I don't know you. She said, did you get honorably discharged from the Air Force? And I threw my arms around her. <laughs> we have been friends for over 40 years. And I'm telling you, when I say she's my friend, when they called and told me that she had had, she died, I called the chairman. And I said, tell me what they said is not true. She said, he said, Bobby, it's true. I dropped the phone. I couldn't move for a long time. But then I thought about something. That Judge Mayberry was a lot of things. But a coward was one she was not. And as I stand here today, the African Methodist Church is going to truly truly, truly miss her. When I spoke at Jamie Coleman Williams' funeral a couple of months ago, two preachers came outside and said, how did you get to speak at Jamie Coleman Williams' funeral? Last night after I saw Ms. Mayberry, two preachers walked up to me again and said, how are you speaking at Pat Mayberry's funeral? Well, I never responded in Atlanta, but I'm gonna respond here. Because she was my friend. It was difficult for me uh, to write these lines because I couldn't find the exact words to describe our relationship and all the memories involved in it. But somehow it was easier for me when I learned that day to just sit 
and cry. And sometimes after that day, I would call her cell phone just to hear her say on the voicemail, as expeditiously as possible. <laughs> but for a person like Pat, uh, you just have to pull through. Pat and I met a little over 25 years ago in Kansas City, Missouri. I'll never forget that day because meeting her ultimately changed my perspective on the AME Church and my involvement. You see, at that time, I was a young adult, for real, that time. <laughs> a young man aspiring to serve the AME Church. That day, the session, the lay session started, and it went into the afternoon, and it appeared that every discussion created some kind of intense moment. I decided that the convention was going nowhere. So I got up, frustrated, and I left. After I was leaving, I noticed this five foot four woman watching me with great interest. It was Pat, and she noticed my frustration. She followed me outside the meeting space, walked me with me down the corridor and said, you remind me so much of myself when I was your age. So I know what you're about to do. Then she put her hand out and she grabbed my hand and said, pay attention to me. You've got something in you we all need to see. So stop, think about what you're doing and don't give up. In my mind, I was like, what is she, some kind of soothsayer that she could just read my mind? Uh, but what was more revealing in that moment was that during the convention, this was the first time that someone showed interest in young adults and took the time to find out what was wrong and offered encouragement. You see, she went beyond herself to see the need to minister to someone else. Pat was selfless. In that very moment, she offered to take me to lunch. She wasn't really hungry. Uh, in fact, she didn't even order anything for herself to eat. She just wanted to make sure she had my attention. She told me to order whatever I wanted and not to worry because she wanted to share this moment with me. And we began sharing moments and, and we've been connected ever since. Pat was giving. Since that time, there was not a week that went by that I did not talk to Pat. We quickly established a bond. During our conversations, Pat was schooling me, preparing me, offering me spontaneous knowledge about the AME church while also applying scripture to everything she personally believed. And I listened to her like a sponge. I quickly realized that she was special and I respected her just as much as she showed interest in me. Because you see, although being born in the AME church, Pat taught me things I did not know about the church. But one of the things I remember and appreciate the most is her teaching me how to uh, research the doctrine and discipline, interpret what I had just read, and applying that information in a way that would still create peace and harmony. Pat was a mentor. Pat was the kind of friend that if you were truly her friend and you knew if you were not, that she had your back. But one thing for sure, she didn't deal with no foolishness. Pat was a woman of integrity. I remember back in 2018, I had a business trip in Long Beach, California, and because I was gonna be there, I wanted to have dinner with her. And on my way, I decided to stop at a mall and a rental car broke down. Pat called me. And she teased me after I told her, she said, where did you rent that car from, the junkyard? But I told her where I was and she was there. I knew she couldn't help the car, but her presence was all I needed. Pat 
was compassionate. There's so much I can go on and tell you about Pat, for example, how well we worked together with her being the director of lay activities and me being the president, her being one of my trusted advisors for my entire administration. And then there are some funny moments like because of her tiny feet, somehow she would just trip over a pebble. And the time she lost a bet where she had to wear hair rollers in her head during one of the presentations in Kansas City, Missouri. I can go on and on, and there's just so much to say. But most of that is personal to me. So Pat, I'll end this way. I knew little that morning that God was calling your name. In life, I loved you dearly. In death, I'll do the same. It broke my heart to lose you. You did not go alone. Because part of me went with you that day God called you home. Thank you, Pat. You left awesome memories. Your compassion still my guide. And though I cannot speak to you, you are always by my side. The lay organization's family chain may seem broken because without you, nothing will be the same. But as God guides me through this pain, that chain link will sustain. A life well lived, Pat, is your precious gift of hope and strength and grace from someone who has made the AME Church a brighter and stronger space. A life well lived, Pat, is your legacy of joy and pride and pleasure, a spirit-filled, lasting memory our grateful hearts will always cherish. So carry on, laity, laymen, soldiers, strong in unity and love, because in this quest, we are bound together with Pat's great hope and God's wisdom that he shares with us from above. Rest in power, my sister.
everybody. Praise the Lord. I ask that all supervisors, missionaries, young people, and associates to please stand as I present this tribute of love, honoring the powerful life and legacy of Judicial Council President Patricia Mayberry. Matthew 24 and 36 says, no one knows when the day or the hour will come, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only our Father. On this day, May 17, 2022, the officers and members of the Connectional Women's Missionary Society of the African Methodist Episcopal Church have come to pay tribute and to celebrate the life and the powerful legacy of one of God's sheep, Judicial Council President Patricia Mayberry. So we gather in love and in respect to reflect on her journey of life and ministry. Former Connectional Officer and former 5th District WMS President Norma Cook said, I will always remember that during conference level meetings when she answered the roll call with such strength in one mere word, present. Speaking like she was addressing the highest court in the land, the strength in her presence alone was impressive and ranks high amongst the qualities that I shall remember. The Bible teaches us that they shall be known by their fruit. And so the remaining brief reflections I wish to share are not so much mine, but of those of a 37-year-old mentee, wife and mother, Erin Cook, who shared with me a few days ago that when she was 16 years old, she was a YPD president at Brooks Community Church in Los Angeles for only one year. And Judge Mayberry was her YPD director, and that in large part was because in one single year. Judge Mayberry was such a strong influence in her life that she became the Christian woman she is today. Judge Mayberry shall long be remembered by her good fruit. When asked to reflect, retired supervisor and former 5th District WMS president, Lola Nixon Cheltenham, proudly stated, Judge Mayberry effectively used her gifts as a guest, guest speaker on many occasions and coordinated the annual senior minister's concert. She was very wise when offering legal advice and freely supported the Women's Missionary Society. She will truly be missed. Current 5th District President Deborah Rabb said, Judge Mayberry was an active member of the Priscilla Matlock Women's Missionary Society of Price Chapel, Los Angeles. And when asked to use her expertise as an attorney to interpret an article in the Constitution and bylaws, she very willingly responded with straightforward interpretation and wisdom. What a powerful difference that she made. These are only a few of the lives that Judge Mayberry significantly impacted, but her life and her profound legacy shall forever resonate in the hearts and in the minds of all that she touched. So on today, as we celebrate Judge Mayberry's life and legacy, we, the officers and members of the Women's Missionary Society and YPD, wish to express our love, respect, and support to her beloved family and dear friends, and encourage each of you to continue to look to God for hope and for strength in the coming days ahead. For the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 
And although her earthly cord has been severed, the soul, the soul of Judge Mayberry is with the Lord. Finally, I say to this fallen servant leader of God, I say, Judge Patricia Mayberry, you have fought a good fight. You have kept the faith. You have diligently finished your course. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Now take your rest. Prayerfully submitted, Bishop Michael L. Mitchell, Commission Chair, Global Witness and Ministry. Dr. John F. Green, Executive Director. Deborah Taylor King, International President. Wanda Ringo, Connational YPD Director. Richard Norris III, YPD President. To God be the glory for the life of the Honorable Judge Patricia Mayberry. Laity, would you please stand and give a round of applause for our outstanding lay member, the Honorable Judge Patricia Mayberry. Thank you, you may be seated. On behalf of President Marta Khan, Abendigo Makiti, President of the Connectional Lay Organization, we bow in humble submission to our Heavenly Father as we share a tribute and memories honoring the Honorable Judge Patricia Mayberry. Judge Mayberry was an amazing individual, having a brilliant mind, one who was loved and well respected. She was Judge Patricia Mayberry Extraordinary. A few days ago, a chariot made of gold descended from heaven and caught the attention of one of our outstanding giants within the African Methodist Episcopal Church. That in the name of Judge Patricia Mayberry. Judge Mayberry was so amazed at the brightness of the golden chariot that she decided to follow the chariot and see where it was going. As Judge Mayberry raced forward toward the golden chariot, the chariot became brighter and brighter. However, Judge Mayberry continued to follow the golden chariot and finally, when the chariot stopped, she saw a band of angels and knew that the chariot was sent from heaven by God to carry her back. Today, we are here to celebrate a life well lived. Today we are here to celebrate a life well lived. <laughs> Judge Mayberry counseled and gave many of us sound advice. Raise your hand if you ever went to Judge Mayberry and asked for advice or she needed to give you some sound counseling. Raise your hand if you valued what she said. As I look around, I see hands from the bishops to the missionaries to the laity and everybody in this sanctuary. Judge Mayberry was always willing to share her gifts and her talent. She was an outstanding workshop presenter and two of her famous trainings were the role of the responsibilities of the stewards and trustees in the local church. <laughs> Judge Mayberry would have the clergy and the laity sitting on the edge of their seats. 
what an awesome session she would have. On the connectional level, Judge Mayberry served as chair of the election committee. She was an authoritative and a valued advisor for the connectional lay organization. She provided the level of professionalism and confidence needed for the delicate and important work of consistency while holding fair elections. Judge Mayberry also served on the Connectional Lay Organization Executive Board as a valued voice of experience and reason as we discussed the various issues facing the Connectional Lay Organization. She was always a voice of clarity on complicated issues that required legal expert, which was appreciated and very much valued by the CLO president and the Connectional Lay Organization Executive Board. Judge Mayberry was very dedicated and always present for the work that she was assigned to and the work she volunteered for. She was truly a devoted and committed member of God's kingdom. Oh, if we could see Judge Patricia Mayberry today, we would see her walking the streets that are paved in gold. For our loved one, our dear friend, the Honorable Judge Patricia Mayberry saw the lightning flash and she heard the thunders roll. And then she heard the voice of Jesus say, come on up, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the gates of heaven. Servant of God, well done. Yes. Servant of God, well done. Thank you. in the matter of Judge Patricia M. Mayberry before the Judicial Council of the AME Church. Parties, Mother Shirley Long Hawkins, Brother Elder Dr. Harold R. R. Mayberry, Sister Marilyn Mayberry McGee, all family and loved ones of Patricia M. Mayberry, President of the AME Judicial Council. Additional parties include bishops, general officers, connectional officers, organizations and members of the AME Church, both clergy and lay. Statement of the issue, the sudden and profound loss of a loved one, leader and friend. Statement of the facts, Judge Patricia M. Mayberry was elected and served as a member of the AME Judicial Council for 32 years and served as president of the council for more than 20 years. She was sincerely loved and highly respected for her wisdom, knowledge, and strength of conviction. The Book of Judges describes judges as people who served roles as military leaders, especially in the time of crises. Judge Mayberry was a former military officer who navigated many legal crises in her secular career as well as in the life of the church. Pat, to those who knew her well, was a gem among women. Much like the pearls she wore, she symbolized wisdom gained through experience. Witnesses in this matter include a former member of the council, Reverend Delman Howard, who declares, my heart is full of sorrow. I know God is still our refuge and help in the time of trouble, and Pat is with the Lord. Well done, servant of the Lord. Former member Tashaun Bowden Lewis states the indomitable Pat Mayberry wielded her power with true Christian character, unbought and unbossed. Thank you for your love, generosity, sage counsel, superior intellect, servant leadership, and sisterhood. Judge Mayberry saw and developed gifts in others. Reverend Leomia Kelly says, I don't know what she saw in me. I was honored for her to appoint me to serve the chap as chaplain to the Judicial Council for my entire tenure. 
Former Counsel Secretary Reverend Vernon R. Byrd, Jr., Esquire declares Judge Mayberry managed to lead eight rather opinionated judges into a cohesive unit. She did not shy away from tough issues. She answered calls at times when the rest of us were fast asleep. She did it all because she loved the Lord and loved her church. She will be missed, but I know I'll see her again. Rosemary, Rosemary Rose Miller Esquire, former vice president of the council, declares Judge Mayberry leaves a 20-year legacy of fearless, unblemished, and unrelenting leadership of the Judicial Council in its deliverance of truthful, unbiased, and legally sound decisions. Conclusions of law. The Judicial Council is the highest adjudicatory body of the AME Church, an appellate court, elected by and amenable to the General Conference, yet we find the discipline gives us no jurisdiction to intercede in this matter, nor can an appeal be taken to the General Conference in that life and death is within the exclusive jurisdiction of the Almighty God from which there is no appeal. The Judicial Council extends its sincere condolences and offers prayers for the family and church. And though we grieve our loss, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Based upon the evidence, we conclude Judge Mayberry early in her Christian journey cried unto the Lord, here is my heart, Lord, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy court above. And God sealed her heart so that life nor death could ever separate her from the love of God. We humbly bow to the will of the Lord, thanking God for her life, body of work, and example set by Judge Mayberry. We now tearfully, yet with the joy of the Lord, pray, come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Here we now raise our Ebenezer, remembering God is our help and strength. We pray our lives and service be pleasing to God so that we, as Judge Mayberry, may arrive safely home. As we present our heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy court above. Judges, would you rise? Opinion by Judge Tanya E. Wright respectfully submitted this 17th day of May, 2022. Judge Derek H. Anderson, Judge Eduardo K. Curry, Judge Thomas L. Best, Judge Warren Hope Dawson, Judge Jonathan C. Augustine, Judge O. Jerome Green, and Judge Tibberle M. Nungubani concur in this decision. <laughs> God be praised. In 2008, the Reverend Harold Mayberry and the Reverend J. Edgar Boyd, um, 2007, came to me and said, you need to run for judicial council. I had no interest in serving on the judicial council and had a very happy life practicing law in Oakland. I was obedient to my pastor and my dean and I announced that I would run for judicial council. Pat Mayberry couldn't stand me. <laughs> Pat Mayberry wouldn't even look at me. When I approached the other members of the judicial council with fear and trepidation just to ask and inquire about what the job was like and whether one would be free to operate in one's own integrity or whether this was just a political court. Other judges had earnest conversation with me. Judge Mayberry would not look at me. <laughs> when I won the race, I wasn't there, but I'm told she turned to the entire 5th District delegation and pronounced that they would rue the day they had made this decision. She still would not look at me. As I sat there listening to the announcements that the secretary read that day, I heard that there would be a judicial council meeting at three o'clock in room such and such of the convention center. 
I made my way over to the convention center looking for this secret room. Judge Mayberry came, walking past me, still refusing to look at me. I said, Your Honor, is there a meeting? Not for you! I was shook in the hallway. Here came Henry Beelin. See me shook. We elected you. You go in that room. He took me to the room, put me in the room. She went, oh. <laughs> Leomia Kelly, I remember patting me on the knee and said, you sit here, it'll be okay. Within a month, I think, or two, it couldn't be. We had lost Priscilla and Granville Reed. We had had threats come against the council that the council had not experienced in the past. And we soon found out that we were not on opposite sides of any issue, that both of us were there serving because we love the African Methodist Episcopal Church and we love Jesus. And I learned that the only reason she was acting up was she doubted my love for the church and my love for God. But when she knew that we were on the same team, <laughs> our stories became legendary. In the 2016, General Conference, she had some kind of political conversation before the election. I don't know who it was with, Reverend Mayberry, but she found out I wasn't going to be elected, <laughs> or she thought I wasn't. She came back into the council room. As shook as I was that day, that very first day, with tears in her eyes, she said, I'm not going to quit. You're going to be all right, baby. I'm not going to quit. You're going to be all right. And when I came back to the room, she said, after having lost the election, she said, you all right? I said, yeah, I'm all right. She said, I'm going to support you, and you're getting in the next time. I said, I know. I'm not running again. <laughs> she said, yes, you are. You're going to win this time. Pat Mayberry showed up at every one of my events. As the pro tem of the steward board at Price Chapel, I think she must have invited me to be the preacher every year. When I built the church, she was there. And we just had the blessing of paying off the mortgage of the church that she prayed by faith and knew would be built. She got to go celebrate that up there instead of coming to sit in the pews at Bethel Fontana. But she was showing up there, showing up shouting, and showing up my friend. And if anybody ever secretly said anything about me, she told me, <laughs> and vice versa. Praise the Lord as we come this moment. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. It is evident and clear that I am not our senior bishop, <laughs> Bishop Adam Jefferson Richardson. But I was told that I am the most senior bishop besides our host bishop. <laughs> How time moves. But we come today standing on behalf of the Council of Bishops to give tribute to this wonderful woman of God. When I think of Dr. Patricia Mayberry, I think of Deborah as the judge in Israel. Dr. Mayberry served as a judge in the AME Church with distinction, has already been said. She served with integrity and confidence. She was determined to do the right thing. She did the right thing because she loved her church. 
She was a force for good. What a Christian she was who loved God, her family, and members of her local church. She loved the lay organization as well as the missionary society. She came up through the ranks of the AME Church. She was professional and lawyer as a judicial council member. And as she served as the chairperson, she once again served with integrity and determination. She was a friend and a sister to many. She has now sown many seeds that will produce many harvests after her body has been planted in the earth because of the seeds she has planted there will continue to be great harvests the judge has now met the chief judge the chief judge who will now give her or has already given her the crown of life that only he can give and so therefore, we rejoice in the fact that God has used her mightily and we have the confidence that she is now with the Lord. For the Apostle Paul reminds us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And therefore, we do not weep as those who have no hope. For we know that death is not the end. It's only a temporary situation. God bless you, Mayberry family, and all the connection of church. God bless you. Why don't everybody just stand for a second? Just, just breathe as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord. All right, you may, you may be seated. One of the characteristics of black folks is that we say that we are seven people apart. One of the characteristics of the church is that because of the itineracy and because of the ability for us to work together connectionally, that we never know who people know when they know it how they know it. We heard that with Mr. Bobby Rankin. You never know how people are hooked up. Dr. Mayberry and I went to school together. We worked together as young people. You never know how people are hooked up. Lived in St. Louis and work with Bishop Henning, you never know. There's a church in Memphis, Tennessee called New Tyler AME Church. I don't know what old Tyler was, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got a church in my district that is greater, is the greater greater. Like, can, can it just be one greater, right? Can, in that church, little small church in Memphis, Tennessee, three bishops came out of that one church. Bishop C. Garnett Henning, Bishop Clement W. Few, and Bishop Ian e. Henning Byfield. Friends and children and a part, they may have known, I had no idea. Bishop Few was then who he is now, a scholar, administrative genius. Bishops call him and he'll say, well now, section eight, page 215. I don't need to read the discipline, I just call Bishop Few. Pastor par excellence, 
went to a church that a pastor tried to build the church and the people, they got the foundation up and the people rebelled and said, we're not gonna build it. And it stayed like that for 30 years. Bishop Clement Few said, not on my watch and build Bethel AME Church. <laughs> Pastor, par excellent, profound preacher, husband, father, grandfather, friend, reservoir of information, but more than that, he is a capable leader of the Fifth Episcopal District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. which includes the shepherding of the Mayberry family. And so before you think just because he is the bishop, he's the eulogist, he's the shepherd of this district. And after the next song by this wonderful choir, the eulogist will be Bishop Clement W. Few. I won't call his full name because he really don't like it when y'all call him his full name. So I ain't gonna call it, but Clement <laughs> W.F.U., come on, receive. Point your hand to the preacher. Point your hand to the preacher and say, preach, Bishop, preach.
Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise God. Praise him from whom all blessings flow. Amen. I want to thank our presiding officer, president of the Council of Bishops, and the person of E. Ann Hitting Byfield. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Thank the members of the Council of Bishops who have come. Your presence is not taken for granted. Your love and prayer support for the family is not taken for granted. Thank you, Bishop Kirkland, for being here among us. Amen. Amen. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our general officers. This, everybody else that stood, would you please stand? General officers of the church, you are present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me acknowledge the presence of the first lady of the district, first lady of my house, our house, my friend and partner in ministry and marriage and all of that. Would you please stand, Alexia? Just stand for a second. <laughs> Amen. And to the family of Patricia Marie Mayberry. Amen. Amen. These persons in assembly here have come to help share the grief and celebrate the life of your dearly beloved sister and aunt and friend. Amen. I hope you listened to the scriptures that were read. First Kings chapter 3, verses 16 through 28. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. St. Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 33. And I lift up these phrases from two of those verses as I text. Do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what shall we wear? But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. I'd like to offer as a thought as we celebrate the life of our beloved Patricia, a righteous judge. A righteous judge. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard your voice and it told your love to me. How I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. This is your moment. You set the appointment. And these are your people whom you call together, not by accident, but by divine intent. You know how to get our attention. So speak that those whom you call together might hear what your spirit is saying to the church. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Who knows or who can speak with any degree of certainty about the circumstances or experiences or words a lack of words that shape our destiny and that put a calling upon our lives. 
Who knows? Who knows? Who, who knows? Who can speak with any degree of certainty? Circumstances or experiences or words said that shape our destiny. Who knows? It, it could be something as profound as when the Lord spoke to Jeremiah before I formed you in the womb I knew you and before you were born I consecrated you I appointed you a prophet to the nations the angel Gabriel was dispatched from heaven to Nazareth to deliver word to the Virgin Mary you will conceive and bear a son and you will call his name Jesus he will be great and will be called the son of the Most High who knows Simon Andrew James and John were fishermen on the Sea of Galilee until Jesus said to them follow me and I will make you fishers of men for, for the Apostle Paul for the Apostle Paul it took a tumble to the ground from his high horse for him to ask Lord what am I to do the Lord said in response go to Damascus there you will be told everything that has been assigned to you. My guess, my guess, my guess is in my sanctified imagination, my guess is that half of the preachers in the sanctuary this afternoon identify with Jesus in our calling. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel. Who knows what experiences or circumstances or words said or words withheld shape our destiny? Who is to say what resonates within the heart and the mind and the spirit of an individual that ultimately shakes, shapes their destiny. It doesn't always have to be dramatic or sensational. It can sometimes be something so simple, so obscure, so tri trivial to the casual observer, yet profoundly meaningful to the person. In fact, it could be something as obscure and as simple as a lasting impression from sibling banter. You're looking for the whirlwind. You're looking for the mountains to shake and the foundations to be moved. And there's something said between siblings that shapes destiny. Harold Rodney Mayberry, older brother by 15 months of Patricia Marie Mayberry. Harold could always get a rise out of his younger sister, Pat, when he would say to her that their parents were really his parents <laughs> because his mother and his father found her in the park on a swing and took her home.
That ain't profound. Just plain old sibling banter. Fifty plus years later, full grown, highly educated, distinguished and decorated officer, Patricia was always visibly shaken when Harold would make that, op that, that allegation. <laughs> However, with maturity and skills that she had honed in the courtroom, Pat would pause for a moment to, to contemplate, and you knew she was contemplating with a comeback because she would position herself, <laughs> brace herself, rocking from side to side with one foot ahead of the other, and then she would speak deliberately, pronouncing every syllable of every word, and each word she said, she said with emphasis. I mean, she knew how to let Harold have it. Now, now don't, 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 don't misunderstand, don't, don't get this twisted. Harold and Patricia were fiercely protective of each other. Fiercely protective. They could play this game with each other. You could look on as they played this game, but you know better than to get in the fray. Amen. Amen. Even though Patricia knew that there was no truth to the allegation or the assertion, who knows what impact those little childhood exchanges may have had upon her selection as a career path. How would Patricia demonstrate her heart for the least, the last, the lost, the marginalized? How would she find expression? As it turned out, she found a way. Amen. You heard, you, you heard, you heard Bobby, Bob Rankin, she found a way. Judge Advocate General Jag in the U.S. Air Force, charged with the, both the defense and the prosecution of military law as provided by the Uniform Code of Military Justice. She, she found a way. Attorney General with the Immigration and Naturalization Service dealing with issues of immigration, visas, green cards, and political asylum. She found a way. Administrative law judge for the state of California's unemployment insurance appeals, labor law attorney for the U.S. Air Force. And yes, in 1992, with more votes than anybody else on the ticket, Patricia Mayberry was elected to the Judicial Council and served for 22 years as the president of the judges of African Methodism. 22 years. Hearing appeals and rendering opinions on actions that impacted the AME constituency from the lay in the pew to the bishops on the bench. And, and for the record, for the record, on May 2nd, the day of Pat's transition, 
the Council of Bishops had just received clarification on opinion 2021-2024-10. And that opinion was rendered over the signature of Judge Patricia Mayberry. I saw Judge Patricia Mayberry in a, another role during one of my very first annual conferences in the 5th Episcopal District. Totally different role. Without her stoic black robe and without her gavel, she was standing alongside her pastor. I think I saw Reverend Rollins in her house. She was standing alongside her pastor as steward delegate to the Southern California Annual Conference, and she was standing there to advocate for his return. Amen. Anybody who's gone through Price or Brookings community knows that Pat has always been a preacher's friend. And of course, she did prevail in getting her pastor sent back. Thank you. <laughs> Today, we can only guess about what influenced the path of service that Judge Patricia Mayberry took. Service to God, service to country, and service to family, as so lovingly enumerated by Sister-in-love, Mary Mayo Mayberry, and niece, Senior Edmondson. Where's Senior? Yes. Amen. So beautifully set forth in the obituary. But who really knows? So I've decided when I get to heaven, and I plan to get to heaven, <laughs> when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Patricia, I'm going to say, Patricia, did you carry the image of that little girl on a swing, alone in the park, frightened and vulnerable? Did you carry that image with you? And as you carried that image, did you carry with it a commitment to Almighty God? that as long as he gives you breath, that you would be the advocate, that you would advocate for all whom you encountered in like circumstances. If that was her commitment and pledge to God, then I declare, I declare that Judge Patricia Marie Mayberry has been faithful to her calling. And with that, judges, I rest my case. Hallelujah! 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 Praise God for even a moment like this, for such a powerfully profound word. We thank God for the preached word and the preacher. All of you have, who have come over uh, from the hotel on fame-provided transportation, there will be two waves of transportation going back. The first of them will leave the premise here, the two Sprinter vans heading back to the hotel at 1.30. The second wave will leave here, headed back to the hotel at 3 p.m. So if you want to stay and
be a part of the repast over the Allen House Gardens, uh, you're welcome to do so. But those two waves of transportation will be, again, 1.30 and at 3 p.m. Either of them would be fine for you. If you have personally associated or directed transportation with connected individuals, please respond to them and be kind and be safe. Traffic uh, on LA freeways begin to intensify at 3 p.m. So don't miss nor underjudge the congestion. It's real. Bless you. Come on, one more time. Give God praise for the eulogy and for the life of Judge Patricia Mayberry as we prepare to recess if the funeral directors will come. Thank you all for your support of this family.
Put it again. down here. We put it. Look. Don't take. My, don't take much. Bring the right people in. Bring the right people in. Working, yeah. so I just got to come out and come back. I come here. Yeah. He was sitting out there. He heard it. Right. I came in over and van out there. Oh, yeah. I'm going out there creeping in. They creeped in. I said, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. So he going to say, he going to send me something. He said, look, mm -hmm. you get it. So I need, I need that bass. I can't. This, is, this that bass just adds to it. Oh, man. Yeah, of course. Coming in, in this house right here, and they got it EQ. It was just, it was so crazy. I ain't never heard it. That was the best I heard it live. Like, yeah. In a minute. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yes, we'll be. Well, that's Darian. Darian. Nice to meet you. It's like me, Darian. 
nice to meet you too. Cut. Right, right. <laughs> we, we can cut it up with the real deal. Okay, uh, I apologize. Hey, I was trying to see if she was okay, but she was acting like, what you talking about? And I'm like, I'm just trying to make sure you're having a good day. Oh, man, have a good day. <laughs> Mr. Kidd. Yes, ma'am. Our paths have crossed. Kevin were kids. I did their first concert. That's I was the one that moved, that, that moved that grand piano and the church went crazy because Little Richard brought it and he knocked yeah. over the touch. Yeah, okay. uh, They didn't tell me that. I moved the grand piano I, and they came in there. I was like, ah, like, I was nice. I have to say, 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 I Oh, let me tell you, he don't have a mess. Okay. I apologize for that. That ain't me, y'all. I think that's stuff in there. So I'll find out when he ain't here today, but I'll call him like that. Okay. And I'll even bring it to you like that. It ain't your fault that that's bad. Okay. Well, make a long story short. Yeah. <laughs> Tony couldn't figure out why every time. Get me 